Okay, so I'm going to open in a slightly different way. I want to turn it over to you. you. I want you to think about this question. What is the one skill necessary to develop and keep up and how we can develop it? And when I say keep up and develop, I mean in the future, in the skills, in the jobs, because we are preparing our children for a future and we do not know what jobs will be there in 10 years time. We don't know what skills they will need in 10 years time. And I have these amazing panelists from three different, different spheres of life in order to explore this. Now, Mara, I'll start with you. Would you like to introduce yourselves and say what you do? Thank you. This is Maram Ayman from Rise Up. Uh, Rise Up is a platform that connects startups to the most relevant resources. Uh, we started in Egypt uh, more than 10 years ago, and we uh, connect startups to the resources through two main different things at the time. Uh, first is events and programs. Um, we have events actually very similar to the Charger Entrepreneurship Festival. We do Rise Up Summit, which is the largest entrepreneurship uh, event in Africa and the Middle East. We'd love to see you all uh, there. If you're an enthusiast about entrepreneurship, if you are a founder, and uh, you can come and benefit from Rise Up. Besides events, we also uh, do programs. And uh, we have programs running all year round with different entities to support startups and entrepreneurs. Thank you. Mohammed, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Mohamed Ajiola. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland in the United States. I run a company called Full Blast Steam, and we work with Baltimore City Public Schools uh, and, and rec centers around the city uh, to uh, engage young people with educational technologies, uh, robotics, drones, virtual reality, 3D printing, 3D printing pens. Uh, so we're all about making these educational technologies more cultural, culturally relevant. Uh, and, and introducing more young people to these activities so that they can develop 21st century skills that prepare them for the, uh, the careers of the future. Okay. And Raya, can you introduce yourself, please? Hi, everyone. My name is Raya. I'm the founder and chief executive officer at School of Humanity. School of Humanity is an innovative online high school. Um, our mission is all about reinventing education to better serve the next generation. At our school, our learners learn by working on real-world projects and having an impact on the world. Um, ultimately, uh, the goal is to scale this kind of education to learners all around the world to better prepare them for the future. Okay, so now we're asking the very important question. What are the skills that you will need in 10 years' time? And how will you teach them? Raya, would you like to start? Absolutely. So I'm going to start by actually doing something maybe a bit controversial. I'm going to challenge the word skills because that's what we tend to focus on. So the OECD has actually coined a term called literacies, and they define illiteracy as a combination of knowledge, skills, and dispositions. So if you're financially literate, you have the foundational knowledge in finance, you have the skills like mathematical reasoning, and you have certain dispositions towards a healthy financial literacy, right? So that's just one example. Um, so at School of Humanity, Literacy-based curriculum, and we focus on a range of literacy, such as flourishing literacy, literacy that's focused on social emotional development, down to thinking literacies, uh, to action, effective communication and action. So I urge us to think about the kinds of literacies that we need most for the future. Okay, and Mohammed? Uh, well, we we focus on 21st century skills, the the type of uh, skills that employers are looking for. You know. Um, and one of the main challenges that we have is, is some of the young people in the, in the environments and urban environments uh, are not really interested in that type of learning, don't see themselves in those roles, don't see themselves in those positions. So creating these activities to be more attractive, more engaging, and, and, and speaking to their current situations, you know, to, to, to make them feel more comfortable with, uh, with seeing themselves in those roles. That's a big part of what we do. So we have two differing opinions. We have skills that employers are looking for, and we have a redefinition and a reframing of moving the skills to literacies. Now, one is applicable to real life situations like financial literacy, social literacy, etc. And then we have the skills that employers are looking for. Now, as parents or as people in the world, you want to make a living. I want you to think about that, and then we will come back and ask open to questions from the floor. And now I'll move on to Mariam. Well, I actually do believe also in literacies or competencies, in other words, rather than just skills. Uh, and I believe for the future, I think we have to be thinking of four 
uh, different elements uh, to develop competencies within. First is digital. So all the digital literacies that are like educating yourself about the digital world, interpersonal competencies or literacies. So how to deal on an interpersonal level with uh, uh, your environment, self-leadership. So how you lead uh, uh, by yourself and then technical skills, which is basically or te technical competencies or literacies that can enable you to be specialized or work in different uh, fields. I think we have to focus on all four pillars and not just uh, and not just one and develop our competencies and literacies within those four pillars. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if everybody agrees, but I will ask you later. The next question are what are the, some of the best ways to invest in yourself? Because everybody knows they go they invest in themselves by going for a haircut or getting their nails done, or the men go to the barber. And for their kids, they invest in them in workshops and different activities. But when you invest in yourself, do you invest in yourself in your emotional development, your social development, your mental development? One of the best ways uh, that I found of investing in myself is just to go meet a friend and have lunch. And that de-stressing and just the letting go and having that, changing the environment, doing something different. What do you guys think? Uh, do you want to start, Mohammed? Um, so, it's, it's unique where we're, where the, the target that we're focused on because there's the idle time piece uh, for the kids that we deal with is destructive. Um, we're dealing with young people who have so many opportunities to get into wrong, the, the wrong activities that, that we really just need to, to show them that there is other options. And um, so that's what we focus on is, is, is just to create alternatives, you know, and, and to put them right in front of it, make it more accessible to them. Uh, you know, there's, there's just so much to get into that's, that's negative and detrimental to their, uh, to their, 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 grow, their growth and development that... Um, that we really have to fight hard to make uh, robotics entertaining, uh, to make 3D printing entertaining and relevant um, to their lives. So, um, so I, I think that, that that's just our focus. I would totally agree. I mean, you think it's hard to make robotics entertaining? Try making Arabic entertaining for kids. I mean, we wanna, I'm, I'm one of the founders of Araby and trying to find fun ways to teach and get them involved and to get them to wake up. I mean, how many people wake up and say, hey, I want to learn Arabic today. And that's the challenge as both a teacher and a parent and as a founder of a company. And that's one of the challenges that all of you have faced in trying to get your skills, your literacy, your programs relevant to today's youth. So, uh, Mariam, how would you, what would you say? I personally believe that to develop or to invest in yourself, first of all, you need to invest in your knowledge and what you know. Second, invest in your relationships. And by relationships, I mean the existing relationships, but also building new relationships and opening um, your network so that like this is also one of the best ways you can actually learn and develop. The third thing is invest in experiences. Experiences all the way from attending conferences like this, like Rise Up Summit, for example, um, participating, like volunteering in different roles. You could even um, learn about something in tech and, vol and, and volunteer or shadow someone who does it. But like to grab or to get the experience, you need some hands-on experience. And also, of course, travel and seeing the world and seeing different uh, things in there. So yeah, knowledge and relationships and experience is the best way to invest in yourself. Okay. And as a parent or as an adult or in the current world, we're overloaded with information. You want to find out something? My best friend Google is there. But then how do you sift through the information overload from all the sources of information to decide this is the right one? What are the things that you would do? What are there a process? What are the steps that people can do when they're, in, when they're looking at information overload and education. Yeah, I think I'm just going to emphasize on what Maram shared, especially from the context of teenagers, high schoolers, and parents of, uh, let's say, younger students, is investing in networking from an early age. It's something that we don't actually think about until we're adults, 
but it's actually crucial. And I was really happy to see Farah's kids here at their booth, you know, and um, I tell all our students this, something like 80% of job offers are made on a referral basis and on a networking basis. Truly your network is your net worth. But beyond the superficial level, um, really finding friends and, that share your vision for the world, finding collaborators and co-founders that, that want to build a new world with you, that's truly a powerful support system. So I encourage more and more families to take that investment into networking very seriously at an early age, just as we take the school curriculum that your child decides to take seriously as well. What was the question again? Information sifting through. Oh boy, sifting through information. How would you explain the information? I, I think that for us, we've we've focused on the the most exciting technologies available, you know, and really push those technologies. Um, so your, your your computer programming. The computer programming, the robotics, the drones, the virtual reality, uh, making those uh, as entertaining as and, and engaging as possible. Uh, and I think that creating uh, uh, spaces where it's safe for, for, for kids to enter and that have these uh, attractions available to them, uh, that that is the way to really get kids engaged. Um, with, so we, we, we just decide based on the, uh, the, the uh, excuse me, the, um, the, the careers available. And, and just, we honed on, on those, we hone in on those six topics and we just decide, we just decided that that's what uh, we're gonna focus on and we just present it to the young people. Um, they have YouTube, they have uh, Khan Academy, they have all kinds of uh, uh, information, but, um, but they're not interested to, to begin with. So, um, so our, our role where we stand is to just present the information initially um, because they, they just don't care. They're, they're too concerned with their phones, their, their, the entertainment, uh, what's happening outside with their friends. Um, so um, we've made the decision as to what's, what's most important for them that we want to introduce them to. And inshallah, they, could, uh, they can gravitate uh, to the next level. They can take it to the next level. And um, once it becomes a habit, um, because right now, uh, too many kids are, are, are just focused on what they see right in front of them. So it's just our mission to make it more accessible and to put it, put what we want uh, them to learn in front of them and just encourage them to stick with it. Uh, and then later on, they run into the challenge of uh, sifting through information uh, to find out, you know, what specific track they want to they want to follow. But f where, where we're at is just, look, you can do something different, you know. Um, and that's what we've been doing for seven years. I would agree with that. And I think the now culture is something that the on-demand, and you can see that in so many things like with the on-demand Netflix, on-demand streaming, where children just want everything now. So how would you say, Mariam, how would you suggest that we teach them to be patient? The, skill, the soft skills. I mean, School of Humanity, I'm sure, Raya, you have some ideas, but there must be a program or something so that these children can develop patience. I mean, for example, I remember when I was young and we had a present and we used to buy it, put it on the shelf and it would stay there and, and you would watch it and know, my birthday's in 10 days time, I'm gonna get it in 10. And it was building up to that anticipation, even booking a holiday. You would look at the time, the tickets, and then you, the build up, which, it contributed to the excitement. Now I find that with the on-demand, with the virtue, with the mobile, everything, social media, it's now, now, now. Even with the dissemination of both information and misinformation, how would you have a program or develop a program for that? Or skill, what skills? We'll go through the three of you. I would actually put uh, patients under the umbrella of self-leadership all together. And this is something that we need to teach kids from a very young age. Um, everything that starts from self-awareness and knowing what I'm capable of and knowing what I can do to having a clear goal on how to get there and to manage myself through the journey of getting there. And of course, 
the incorporating patients into that. How I would uh, I would think about that, or I would incorporate that in a in a curriculum for kids, for example. Even though I'm not the best, like we have two uh, experts talk about like kids education, but uh, even for kids or adults, I would like. Um, engage them in programs like for example learning um, how to plant something that takes time you know something where you put a seed and like you could see the the, the progress of of it and then like you could see the results you know um, and again like different activities to know how to manage yourself so teaching them how to like run a project even if it's a very small project uh, at home, decorating something, doing something. And, and I think this is something that we have to also not just teach for kids, but also for, ev for adults as well and preach for adults as well that it's something that's super important. We need to hire people who have the skill, self-leadership and entrepreneurial leadership. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Self-leadership is huge. Uh, the social-emotional learning piece is huge when engaging them to get them to that point. Uh, where they can start to develop that internal mechanism that pushes them forward. But, um, but yeah. So tackling it from a different angle, in psychology they refer to it as delayed gratification. Has anyone heard of the marshmallow experiment? Show of hands, if you nod. So the marshmallow experiment was they basically took uh, some toddlers and uh, they did ran this experiment with them where they said you can have one marshmallow now or if you wait 10 minutes you'll get two marshmallows. And then beyond that, they actually followed those uh, toddlers' journeys until they were adults. And the children that were able, that had the patience to wait for two marshmallows, had higher test scores, they were more successful in life, later on in life. And that's that delayed gratification effect. And it's definitely a challenge in this day and age with instant gratification is what runs the economy. Uh, from my experience, what I've seen is that the moment you turn the curriculum from knowledge-based to skill-based, it immediately has to force that delayed gratification. Because one of the first things our students learn when they first join School of Humanity is you can't cram a new skill. You can't just cram it the night before in a project or an exam. You develop a skill over time by practicing again and again. And there's a mastery journey that you have to have patience for. So that's been my experience with that. Yeah. Okay. Do we have any questions from the audience? Muhammad. Does anybody want to ask a question? Anybody? Muhammad. First of all, thank you all so much for your time. This conversation, this panel has been very, very beautiful and very inciting to listen to. Uh, my question was when you mentioned the delayed the gratification. So basically, when you're when you're in a when you're in a lifetime or in a stage of like instant gratification, how do you actually get past that and start practicing the the idea of having that delayed gratification and going back into your roots of actually being patient and being honest with yourself of the things that you're getting and that dopamine hit. Um, it's a hard one because it varies from person to person, that journey. Um, if I had a child, <laughs> the way I would approach it is gradually increasing that length between doing something and getting that gratification. So maybe, and, and it helps to break it into milestones. So it might be really hard for a new student of something to wait one year to get gratification. But if you break it down into milestones, so after one month, you'll be able to get on stage and just talk. After two months, you'll be able to have positive body language. After three months, you'll be able to answer questions on the spot. So kind of building up that journey towards the end milestone, I think, would be the way I would tackle it. Yeah. Yeah, it's Well, thank you. Thank you very much for having us. And uh, last thing, like I would, I, I would like to just stress on that. Um, since we are in an, the Sharjah Entrepreneurship Festival on the entrepreneurial leadership, be your own leader. And it, we are in a world we ha where we have so many options. There is no longer one career or one track that one can uh, one can take and follow. So invest in yourself and all the multiple passions you have and all the multiple skills that you can develop or literacies that you can learn and lead yourself through the way to different uh, outcomes. There is no one correct and one path uh, that is uh, right or wrong. So yeah. Okay.
and Muhammad, the one uh, skill that is necessary and how would you develop it? Uh, uh, creativity um, and, and, and uh, a passion for, for, uh, for exploration, for, for wonder, to, to, to wonder, to, to want to know more. You know, that's, that's, that's really important. Um, and starting as early as possible, you know, starting as early as possible. And really, if, if, if at all possible, to turn off the, the television, turn off the social media and, and be able to infuse the, uh, these concepts of, 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 of uh, imagination um, as soon as possible and to develop that before being exposed to what the world is pushing on, onto the young people. Um, I think that's really important. Just uh, develop curiosity and imagination and, uh, and, and try, to shelter, try to shelter the young people from, from uh, the ill effects of, of what the society is pushing a lot of times. I think that's the most important thing. Thank you. And Raya? I'm going to pick two that are related <laughs> to each other. Um, one is how to learn. I think it's rather ironic that most of us go to school for 18 years of our lives and no one actually teaches us the science of learning, strategies for learning, you know, brain-based ways of learning. So that's one crucial one. And related to that is being able to tap into flow states. So a flow state is a state where you are completely in the zone, where you completely lose track of time and it's optimal productivity. And there's actually a science and techniques to be able to tap into a flow state and be able to just really focus on something for a long period of time. And so I think those two skills together can allow you to learn effectively as well as do effectively. Okay. Thank you, Raya, Mohammed, and Marim. And I just want to end with um, one, th one thing. Technology is technology. But we are all people, and humankind needs people to exist. So we should all, the one thing for me is be kind and listen. We often listen, but do we understand? We listen. Do we listen so that we can speak and reply, or do we listen to actually hear what the person is saying, what they are trying to tell us? The one thing I would say is emotional intelligence and just be kind and listen and that will make the world a better place because technology was, will come and go, they will be developed but at the end of the day they're all made by people and we are the people. We are creating the future and we are building education and technologies for our children to make the future, to make a better world for us. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, and on that, on that very, very inspiring statement, we the people will give our panelists a huge round of applause, please. Well done. Thank you very much for those inspiring words, Farah. Thank you, Maram, for sharing your expertise. Thank you, Mohammed, for being part of this. And thank you, Ryan. <laughs>